Hey, it's Matt. In this video, I want to give you a completely new way of thinking about how to improve your movement abilities and all the concepts that are related to movement abilities like your flexibility, your strength, your explosiveness, your power, just everything. Everything that you can kind of think of, athleticism, the whole thing. So before I kind of like give you something new, I kind of want to create some sort of contrast by telling you what I perceive to be the, the kind of standard uh, way of thinking about improving movement in the world. And it's this. You'll watch some sort of video or read some sort of article or talk to some person who advises on exercise and they'll say, do this exercise because it will work to give you this particular result for these reasons okay so in a very basic sense that would be someone who just comes along and says i've been working on uh, developing my shoulder mass and here are three exercises that i did that gave me great results so here they are try them out i think they're going to really work for you Good job, go, go for it, Get stay motivated. And on an even larger scale, like the, uh, the pinnacle, let's say, of this mode of thinking, it would be where someone says, uh, recently a team of scientists at Harvard or some arbitrary university did a study with 100 people to see which uh, exercise uh, created the best hamstring flexibility over a period of three weeks. And it turns out that this exercise was the best one. So this is the scientifically proven best exercise to give you hamstring flexibility, to give you bicep growth, to give you a stronger back, to improve your deadlift, to make you swim faster, anything, anything, anything. It's Here's an exercise, it's, it works for these reasons, it's proven, so you should go do it, right? This is the exercise, take this, do it in this particular way in, that I'm showing you because I'm a fitness guru and I'm gonna now do this in the perfect form and you can watch it and then you go and replicate that and you will also get the result. Okay, so, I don't mean to criticize the exercises at all. It's not that the exercises are bad. That's not what I'm saying. What, I'm, what I want to draw your attention to is that what they're saying is that some group of people whom you've never met before, potentially on the other side of the world, did an exercise in a way that you can't actually see uh, and they got some result and therefore because it worked for them, then that's what you should do. Okay. But the, there's a few problems with that, but one of the ones that's the most obvious that you might just immediately relate to is you have to kind of understand that the, the similarity between your body and the way all your muscles and joints and are working and uh, how your nervous system is operating your, the, you know, those particular things I just mentioned. The similarity between that system and someone else's system is like the difference between your face and someone else's face. Like, isn't that crazy? Like, you know, you walk around the world and it's like, well, there's billions of people, but none of them look like me. Isn't that just crazy? And when you do see someone that just looks a little bit like you, you're like, Whoa, it's, it's amazing, even though it's like not that similar. But with the body, I'm telling you, it's just as different and it's probably even more complex. I mean, there's a whole lot more uh, nerves and a whole lot more muscle mass and everything like that than just, just the face, right? And yet we're willing to say, okay, these people did it and got a result, therefore I should. Now, Another example, by the way, I think this one's funny as well. It's like if a scientist went and did a study and with hundred people and tested like a bunch of uh, evening meals and said, which one's the tastiest? And then came to you and said, this is the tastiest meal. You should totally eat it because it's proven. It's scientifically proven. This is going to give you the best enjoyment. And you know, with that, because you're actually 
experienced with taste, you'd be like, well, I'm skeptical. But most of us aren't experienced with like sensations and muscles. So, you know, you can do that kind of stuff and you can get results. Like it, it'll work, you know, but it's not catered for you. It won't solve your independent problems. It won't unique, I mean, your unique individual problems. It won't completely help you get that specific improvement that you're trying to make. It's just like vanilla stuff for the mainstream that you can use to get vanilla mediocre results. So I want to offer you something else, something completely different. And before I can, secondly, before I can kind of like explain, no, I can go straight into it. So what I want to suggest to you is that you become your own independent, objective movement scientist, where you are essentially the number one authority on getting information from your body, perceiving your body and like understanding all the signals from your body and feeling your muscles and all that and making decisions on how you should do exercises to get the specific outcomes that you're looking for. Okay. Now that's how to express it in just kind of one sentence, but let me explain how it will, how that really kind of like works. Like how does the science of that actually work? How do you do that? So to understand that, you need to understand a little bit about uh, the philosophy of objectivism. And you need to understand how objectivism talks about how knowledge is gained, okay? Because if you're going to be a scientist, that's about uh, accumulating and verifying knowledge and then using that knowledge in experiments to get a particular result, okay? So in objectivism, there are three stages of knowledge. There is the sensory stage, the perceptual stage and the conceptual stage, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what all those three stages are and then I'll explain how those three stages of knowledge, how you can use them and work with them to actually develop your own body independently. The sensory stage is the stage of chaotic mess of sensations, right? So. It's just all the sensations that are coming in visually, auditorily, from your muscles, kinesthetically, your balance, everything. It's just this whoosh of sensations that are coming from all your uh, senses to your brain all the time. Completely undifferentiated. They carry no knowledge or advice or anything like that. It's just pure sensation. The second stage of knowledge is called the perceptual stage. Now, this stage is where you actually begin to identify, you know, unique signals. Like when you're, you can, like when most of us start to go through this perceptual stage, it's when we're a child. So you start to actually identify particular sensations and you're like, oh yeah, that group of sensation is this kind of like this thing. And it's different from this one, which is this. So you might be like, that's soft, that's hard. And then you're like, this is dark, this is light. And like, that's, that's a person, and that's a different person. And this is some sort of wood thing, not that you would use the word wood, but like that feels like this kind of thing, and this feels like that kind of thing. Okay, so that's the perceptual stage where you can actually label unique things. You don't have any concepts to refer to them or anything like that. It's just like, this is different from that. Then you have the conceptual stage. This is where you actually start to use language and words and actually say, okay, that thing over there, that's a table. It's got a flat surface, it's got four legs, and that thing over there, that's a table as well. That's got four legs and a, surf and a flat surface. It's a bit different, but they're both tables. And that person there, that's my mom. That person there, that's my dad. Now that person over there, I don't know who they are, I've never seen them before in my life, but that's a person too. And like, that's a cat, right? And then in terms of your body, you know, you're like, okay, this is an elbow, this is an elbow, this is a knee, this is a knee. Now they're both joints and this is a core and this is a head and all of these things I've just mentioned, they're body parts or anatomical parts or something like that. So it's this conceptual stage where we're actually playing with words and really, you know, just, you know, making up this big, you know, 
body of language that can actually refer to stuff and help you describe things and understand things. So you go from this blur of sensation and then you start to really perceive in, you know, unique things and then you're conceptualizing. So you're really understanding and making intellectual sense of the world. And this sen sensation thing is just like a mess. It's undifferentiated, it's nothing. But after you start to work with the perceptual stage and the conceptual stage, then you're actually able to really live a life. You're able to like go through school and like understand all these com complex topics and go to maybe university or some sort of trade school or just go straight into a job and you're actually able to progress in a career and you can meet a spouse or something like that and you can actually live this complex life thanks to these perceptual, uh, perceptual and conceptual faculties. Now, most of us, yes, we have the perceptual and conceptual faculties developed in terms of like academic and work life kind of things and maybe relationships as well. But when it comes to the body, when it comes to the muscles, most of us do not have the perceptual and conceptual levels of knowledge developed. It's just like this blur of chaotic mess of sensations and maybe just pain and awkwardness and we're just in like bad posture and we're like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't feel good, but I don't really have any way to do it. And if we try to do some exercise, you know, sure, we're like, uh, okay, so apparently I'm meant to do it like this. Ugh, ugh, or like try to do flexibility. It's like, oh, I'm not very flexible. Oh, it's not working. And it's like, we're just copying what other people tell us to do, but it's like no real understanding of what's going on. So when you become your own independent, as I said before, just a little phrase here, independent objective movement scientists, a little bit corny, but whatever, you start to actually be objective about what's going on in your body and say, oh, okay, so there's all these sensations coming from my muscles because your muscles, they have these like sensors, biological sensors in them that are sending to your brain like all the time information or rather data, let's say, data about the length of your muscles, data about the uh, tension levels in your muscles, data about pain. You also have this balance sense that's telling you like, are you balanced, are you not balanced? You can even use your eyes and you can like literally see to you know, kind of like work with those sensors and kind of pair them up. You can even like, you know, take your hand and like feel your arm and you can feel your muscles through your arm and be like, oh yeah, okay. So there is all this sensory data, data coming to you. And when you start to get independent about that, you actually go back to that perceptual stage and start to really be like, oh yeah, I noticed when I do this, that it feels like that particular thing. And when I move my shoulder like that, like just say you've got pain in the shoulder, you're like, oh yeah. Like you're actually, you know, thinking about it. You're like, oh yeah, so it's kind of the pain happens when it's that. Or if you're trying to improve something, you're like, oh yeah, I notice when I push in this particular way, it feels a bit more efficient and less tight and it works better. Or if you're doing some sort of gymnastics movement or a, you know, a martial arts thing, you, you can, when you do a punch or something like that, you can actually notice everything and you can keep track of all your movements and be like, yeah, yeah, I notice like, yeah, my hip turns this way and you can actually really take control and improve independently just because you've engaged like your ability to really consciously interact with all this sensation and you're conceptualizing this whole framework of how you think about your movement, so you actually become like intellectual and smart about describing your own body. So at that point, you know, you, this is the, the world's your oyster. Like there's all these exercises you can do and you can just try them out and you can make a little bit of improvement with that exercise, a little bit of improvement with that exercise. And you've just got this whole new tool bag of ability <laughs> like that you can just use to just make improvements so much more quickly instead of basically stagnation um because i was a a disaster like two and a half years ago something like that like just full tightness terrible posture 
nothing going on, no flexibility for trying to do anything athletic, just injury, pain, bleh, disaster. Uh, but then I, I studied with Eric Westerberg from Barba Fitness. I started with studied with Edwin Ertel from Scope of Life. I studied objectivism and learned all these like you know cool philosophical concepts about like how to you know just think better in general. And you now after I just paired that all together, it's like wow. And now my movement is like by my own standards pretty great. I mean I'm no Usain Bolt. I'm no you know. Russian uh, gold medal gymnast or anything like that or uh, like Conor McGregor or something like that but that's okay like uh like I have really good movement in my own on my own terms now and the thing is if you start to be your own kind of scientist and do this independently you can do it as well so that's that for that video uh if you want to if you like this type of thinking it's not for everyone for some people it's like some nerdy esoteric blah blah I get that but if you like this stuff you can check out my channel, it's Matt Cook. I uh, also have a website, it's mattcookmovement.com. And if you want to get my one hour, like, muscular tension relief system, that's at, Matt, uh, that's at themovementvideo.com. You can actually also find the video on my website, mattcookmovement.com, but themovementvideo.com is a special website I created just for that video. But other than that, uh, if you're liking my videos, yeah, just look out for them and Enjoy, a lot more cool ones coming. See you later.